Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, welcome to uh, my uh, Empowered Living uh, Next Level, taking it to the Next Level Monday Night Class. I'm John Hyatt, I'm the coach on the square, and I'm your coach for life. So it's my pleasure to host this opportunity for us to talk about things that are on our minds and that we're sharing. This is where I do my coaching. Uh, reminder, uh, every Wednesday morning from 7.30 to 8.30, I have started this year a leadership mastermind um, that I'm just kicking off. So if you know anybody who would be interested in doing that, any business owners or leaders that would be interested in coming to that, it's $10 and free coffee. So um, the intent of tonight, again, is that you uh, get some takeaways, get some insight into your situation uh, by what we share or maybe by what other people share. I think one of the benefits of this class is sometimes we learn a lot from each other. Uh, about what other people are going through, about how they're seeing things. And uh, so the intent of this class is that you feel a little bit better, a little happier, a little bit more peace, and more hopeful about whatever you have might, uh, going on in your life. What we'll do first, oh, it's a donation class. So there's a blue bowl over there by the coffee maker, so I appreciate your uh, donation in advance, and uh, thank you very much for sharing that energy. So why don't we start here? We'll just go around, just say your name, and if there's something you, or your first name, and if there's something you want to talk about, something you want to celebrate, or something that's on your mind that you're working on, just make a brief statement about that. And we'll start here. I'm Joe, and I think I'm just coming up with a new word every week now. Okay. And this one has to deal with self, and I was, I've been doing self dash dot dot dot, and you put awareness and, and ish and all that stuff. And the one I came up with the last couple of days is self-inflicted. Self-inflicted. On, on on every level. Okay, that's a that's a powerful insight. We can talk. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, my name is Michael. Um, I'm familiar with the law of attraction, um, but I've never really used it all that much. Um, and I have just reopened my massage healing practice. Uh, after a 10 years of putting it on the back burner. So I'm looking to reignite all of that again. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank That's you. exciting. Yeah. Brian, I'm uh, again just here for self development and uh, learning scripting. Okay. And I'm Christine, and I'm where this gentleman is in the same place. Of feeling blocked and stuck with my scripting. Like I have a hard time thinking of things to script about. Not because I have everything in the world already, but I feel like I'm repetitive day after day, week after week with the things that I'm looking for. Okay. Even though I see them, I don't move beyond. Okay. And I'd like to move beyond. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Omar, just working on discipline and controlling my thoughts. Okay, great. Gabe, and I'm here to uh, continue to put my learning on scripting also, and to uh, discover my blockage also in regard to scripting that way I could continue to flow for this year. Okay. It doesn't matter. I'm Jenna, and um, I guess a question that I might like to discuss at some point, it doesn't have to be tonight, but like, since I'm new to scripting, how do you deal with um, something specific that you've scripted about that didn't come to pass? Okay. And how to navigate. Navigate that, sure. Uh, my name's David, and um, I just enjoy coming. And um, stay in a positive mode. And that's what I can enjoy coming. Great. And I'm Gina, and I'm uh, happy to be here and learning whatever I'll get from the coach and the rest of you guys. Uh, Terry, just here to try to figure it out. All right, Maybe sounds I'll... good. <laughs> <laughs> well, give yourself a, a hand. The reason we clap and do that little celebration is because it acknowledges that it's okay to be us. It's okay to be going through what we're going through. It's okay for us to be achieving what we're achieving. And it's okay for us to be blocked and stuck and stumbling and trying to figure it out. It really is okay. And when you acknowledge that and allow that, that opens a lot of door for freedom to move. Because again, if we can, it, 
if we go into judgment mode about, oh, I'm blocked, okay, or I can't figure it out, um, that judgment closes doors. And the law of attraction works best when the doors are open. The law of attraction works best when your doors are open. Now, open doors does not mean that you have it all figured out. Open doors can just mean that you allow yourself to see things in a way that it's okay to be where you are and that you are in the flow of figuring it out. That the very fact that you haven't figured it out is evidence that you are figuring it out. See, that's what we don't want to see a lot of times. We think that if we haven't figured it out or we feel like we can't figure it out, that somehow we are off purpose when we're feeling that way. No, that's fake news, okay? <laughs> the truth is, is that acknowledging and questioning your purpose, questioning where you are, questioning what you wanna do next, um, questioning your past, questioning your present or your future is evidence that you are on the right path. Okay, so take the pressure off. If you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling self-inflicted, take the pressure off the judgment. Go, isn't it interesting that I feel blocked? I'm going to allow myself to feel blocked. That's okay. In fact, even though I feel that I'm blocked, maybe I'm not as blocked as I really think I am. In fact, what if I'm not? See what I'm saying? Again, it opens doors. If we review the law of attraction, the law of attraction is really only about energy. And it's about how, how we vibrate. And so those words have power. The law of attraction is about energy. And it's about vibration. So, if I feel like I'm stuck, if I feel like I can't figure it out, if I feel like I'm self-inflicted or in some way, that thought, those words, create a very powerful vibration. Okay? And I can stay stuck in that with closed doors. If I focus, <clears throat> if I start to think that I shouldn't feel that way and I should feel something different. Okay, that creates a vibration. And with the law of attraction, like always attracts like. Like energy always attracts like energy. So if we're feeling closed, unless we're aware of that and moving through it, we're going to attract more closedness. Okay, if we are frustrated that we're blocked and we allow that judgment to go deep and to focus on that judgment, we're going to attract more feelings of blocked energy. Okay? But the good news is if I go, even though I think I'm blocked, I'm open and willing for movement, and maybe me being feeling blocked right now is a part of that movement, Boom, instant shift. Totally different energy. And those are the things to be aware of. Those are the things to be aware of. Because it's all about whether we're in that, in that flow. Are we going upstream or downstream? Okay? So everything is energy. Everything is vibration. Like attracts like. We're always creating, whether we're conscious or aware of it or not. So we're always vibrating, whether we're consciously aware of it or not. We're always creating results, either spiritual, emotional, mental, physical results, um, whether we're aware of it or not. You don't have to be aware to create something. You create intentionally and more deliberately 
when you apply your awareness to what you want to want to and that's what really increases the law of attraction that's what increases your experience during scripting and we'll talk more about that okay so just remember that you are a powerful magnet and you're not just a powerful magnet for the junk okay for the stuff au contraire you're a powerful magnet for the good for higher vibration for movement for success for accomplishing your goals, for getting and finding a new relationship that really feels good, for moving through um, a painful experience in the past, for achieving a new business goal, okay? That high energy, that creative power is within you. I was listening to um, some material this morning that was talking about this is the biggest enemy. Doubt is the biggest enemy that we have. Because what type of energy does doubt cause? Closed door energy. Blocks energy. Okay? Especially when it applies to ourselves. Oh, I could never do that. Oh, that's nice. What that person is doing over there, I could never have that. Okay? Oh, I'm making a decision, but I doubt it's the right one. Okay, and I doubt it's the right one because I made a decision 10 years ago and it didn't go the way that I thought it would go. Okay, so all of that creates this doubt. So start, if there's any, any area of your life or any aspect about yourself where that doubtful energy pops up, pay attention to that. Because that's what you want to shift. That's what needs to be moved. And that's what will open the doors. That's where significant movement can occur because you go from doubt, what's the opposite of doubt? Certainty. Confidence. Certainty. What? Confidence. Confid Let's use confidence. Doubt versus confidence. So how can you take whatever situation that you stated there at the beginning and move from doubt to confidence. What new thought, what new words would you need to think or say in your head first <clears throat> to shift you from doubt to confidence? I can do this. Let's do Why it. can't I do this? Why can't I do this? Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on in, Brandon. Let's see, man. Um, exactly. Anybody else? If not, why? I mean, if not me, who? Right? Who else is going to do it? Evidence that somebody else has done it is really good evidence that mm -hmm. you can do it. That's the best evidence you can have. That's why I love looking at extremely and admiring extremely successful people because they haven't always been successful and they didn't become successful overnight okay most of them have struggled have learned have gone bankrupt first have suffered business failures or losses or family losses or overcome personal health issues or whatever it might be to be who they are where they are and that's the best example example that we can have is is if they can do it I can do it If this person can create a company I can create a company okay if this person can have a successful relationship I can have a successful relationship how else do the Olympian champions do it okay how does a runner feel confident that they can break the four-minute mile that's old school now right mm -hmm. They all break the four minute mile now. And what was interesting was, and I don't know all the details, I heard it and read it a little while ago, but it was like X number of years in history before somebody was recorded as breaking the, the, the mile, the four minute mile. And then it was finally done. And then isn't it interesting that after that first person broke the four minute mile, other Athletes started to break it. Jeez, 
What happened there? What shifted there to create that? Belief. Possibility. Faith. Confidence. Oh, well, if it can be done, then what's stopping me from doing it? Okay? It, 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 it's the same thing with any, any of those Olympic events or any um, professional athlete or successful business person. You know? Bill Gates, uh, Steve Jobs, they started in garages. Literally. Okay? So, we fool ourselves when we say that we can't. Because that's the old ego part that's been around for a long time and keeps whispering in your head, no, nah, man, that's not going to be you. No, you can't do that. They did it, but you can't. They have it, you can't. Okay? Because, fill in the blank, there's some excuse. You didn't come from the right family. You don't have the right looks. You don't have the right body. You don't have the right mind. You don't have enough money. You don't have this and you don't have that. And we believe all of that. And that creates, well, might as well not even try. Okay? And that creates energy and loss, okay, from us achieving our dreams and goals. And any one of us could be any one of the people that we just talked about. Given the right circumstances, the right desire, I don't think I'm going to win a gold medal anytime soon in the mile, you know, and break a four-minute mile. But I can do other things. And we don't recognize the greatness that is really in us on a daily basis. We don't give ourselves any credit to say, I'm a great man, I'm a great woman. And I'm great because of who I am and what I have already. And because I'm great, I'm going to trust that greatness to take me through whatever it is I'm going through. And to open the doors for me to grow in my greatness. In fact, grow in my greatness by helping other people see and experience their greatness. Okay? Muhammad Ali said, I was great and I knew it. Uh, before I even became it. I knew it when I said it. So he didn't claim he was great after he was already the champion. He believed he was great when he was practicing in the ring at a young age. So whatever you're going through, if you believe that you're great at it right now, and this is what I tell my kids and, and, and other people that I know that are studying to become certain things. I'm a firm believer that you will have a completely different experience treating yourself as if you are a great massage therapist now rather than waiting until when fill in the blank. When you have this many clients, when I have this much money, when I have this book written or you know uh, this amount of commission or this you know, I'm a $10 million producer in real estate, okay? No. If you focus on the fact that you are great already, and then you act as if you are the great $10 million real estate producer, the great massage therapist, the great whatever IT guy, and you show up in that space now with that, bringing that inspiration and confidence of greatness, you've completely shifted the energy around who you are and what you do and how you show up. How you show up to yourself, how you show up to those close to you, and how you show up to others. I was wondering if you could, because I have a question for you. Go ahead and ask. Um, what you, what you were just saying about um, that you know you are all those things. And I believe what you say when you say it because when normally when I think that and say it, I do the things to achieve it. But the thing that bothers me, I'm trying to not let bother me when people try to tell me my story. Yes, thank you. Thank you. They don't see the work behind. No, they have no clue. Yes. 
Okay, and that is true of all of us have been there where somebody has either, and I, I heard this again this morning, I was listening to uh, Grant Cardone, Be Obsessed or Be Average. We come across two different people in our lives, naysayers and haters, okay? Now the naysayer could be my mom, you know? Hey, nobody in this family has ever been a successful salesman, so, you know, do the safe government job instead. Okay, now I can receive that as she's naysaying on me and I can go, oh, I'm never gonna be good at sales, or I could go, you know what? That's my mom's perception of salesmen that explains her story and her pers perspective of sales from when she grew up, from going through the depression, from seeing instability in the job market and in salespeople that she knew. So all she's doing is really telling her story about herself. She's trying to make sense of it to herself. How does anybody go into sales? Well, no, I have to make sense of it my, from my own perspective, so I apply my perspective, but I'm describing you. Oh, you can never do that, or what would you do if this happened? What are you gonna do if that happened? Well, you've got no business doing this, you should do this instead. Naysayers are well-intended, most of them, people, friends, family, close people, who express doubt about something that we want to be great in. And bless their heart. They have a right to their own perspective. Here's the gift in that is, is you don't have to convince them. No. You can say, thank you. For your perspective, I'm going to do this anyway because I have confidence in my own greatness. I have confidence that this is what I want. I have confidence that I can make a difference. Oh, and by the way, would you support me in that? Okay, there's the evidence of a real friend. All right. So you've got, and here's the thing. Typically, we are our own worst naysayer. It goes back to what we talked about. Oh, you can't do this. No, nope, you shouldn't do that. You should have done this instead. Should have been a doctor or a lawyer, John. You'll, you know, you'll never make money now. Okay, see that kind of that kind of thought that creates that doubt, and we naysay on ourselves. We are our biggest naysayer. So any belief or dialogue, internal dialogue you have going on in your head right now that's telling you what you can't do and what you shouldn't do and how it won't make any difference if you do it. Pay attention to that voice and stare it down. Oh, you're just, this is the old perspective. You're trying to make sense from an old perspective of beliefs that are not true. Thank you for sharing. I'm confident. And I'm moving forward in the direction. And then you have haters. So you have naysayers and you have haters. Okay? Haters are those people where there's nothing well intended about them at all. Okay, they want to take you down deliberately. Okay, um, they don't like seeing you succeed. They are vocal about it. They say it to your face. They may say it to other people. They may post stuff online about it, about you. Okay, well, I love Grant Cardone's response because he says, you know, thank you haters. Thanks to all the haters. He made a little list of all the haters that he had going through his life. To the people that fired him, to the therapist who did this, to uh, the, the, the so-and-so who pro proclaimed this over him, to uh, this person and that person. He said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because all they did was move him forward. And to his haters, he goes, hey, love me or hate me, at least you know me. You know, and any hater out there is a promoter. Isn't it amazing? For all the hate that are on certain politicians these days, all they are really doing is promoting the very person that you hate. And that happens on both sides. It happens on both sides of the political spectrum. Anytime I, I'm, I'm talking about somebody on a consistent, constant basis, and I'm saying hateful, meanful, uh, things about them or that I disagree with them, I'm giving them free, free, free advertisement. 
okay? So you can thank the haters too. And you don't have to give, pay them any attention because you're not going to change their mind anyway. You're not going to win them over. But you can say, love me or hate me, at least you know me. You know, and thanks for putting my name out there. Okay, thanks for putting me out there. Because there's so many more people. See, this is where the abundance mindset comes in, and this is so important here too. See, doubt is about scarcity. I don't have enough, right? Don't have enough. Not enough whatever, fill in the blank. Whenever I have a doubt of my, uh, about myself, there is something that I don't have enough of, okay? But confidence is about abundance. And abundance is, is that even if I don't have it, I can go out and get it. I can create it. I can build it. I can make it. I can find it. You know? And this is the big difference. People use this in relationships about love. Well, I've, been, I've had my share of relationships, you know, married this many times, divorced that many times, dated this many times, never worked out. What is that, doubt? Well, it must not be enough. Either there's, not a love, there's not enough me. I'm not good enough for love. There's not enough love. Or there's not enough men or women out there to love me. That's all scarcity thinking. It's all lack-minded. Okay, it's all scarcity complex. So that's going to put a doubt on how I approach my dating experience, how I approach my relationship experience. But if I go, oh, yeah, I've had some relationships. Oh, that's okay. There's enough me. There's more than enough love. And there's more than enough people who would be a fit for me that all I have to do is keep putting myself out there and looking. And like the law of attraction, I'm going to attract somebody who's a fit for my values. And it doesn't matter what's transpired in the past. So, this is all about what do you want to create? And that's the constant question that's always being asked. What do you want to experience? What do you want to believe? How do you shift your words and your mindset to align with what you want? and to describe it, and to believe that it's out there. Because again, if I don't think, if I'm, if I'm starting a new business and I don't think there's enough clients, if I don't think I have the right skills, if I don't think I have enough connections, doors are closed. I'm not gonna be motivated to make new calls in the morning. I'm not gonna be motivated to go to networking meetings to meet people. I'm not going to have a passion to pursue opportunities that come my way, even if somebody gives it to me. Why? Because I'm full of doubt. I'm full of scarcity. There's not enough. But if I go, wait a minute, there's tons. There's tons of people out there who can use my product or service. In fact, there's infinite number of people. And all it is, it's a matter of time and effort and action for me to do it. And that's what makes the law of attraction the law of action. Okay? This is action. This, this type of feeling creates action. Whereas this type of emotion creates uh, staying stuck. If I'm full of doubt, I'm stuck. If I'm seeing opportunity, I'm wide open. <clears throat> I go anywhere. I'm willing to try anything. I'm going to update my website, change my social media, make some phone calls. I'm going to approach people. I'm going to set up a vendor tent. I'm going to, whatever it is that you, you do in your business, you know, I'm going to put my, get my resume out there. And I don't care how many rejections I get but we care about how many rejections we get. Okay, why? What do rejections create, most typically? 
down. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. Right? I don't have the right qualifications. I'm not smart enough. I'm not lucky enough. I'm in the wrong town. I'm in the wrong house. Whatever. I'm in the wrong field. Okay? But what if I don't care anymore about rejection? How would that change the way you approach your business? Unstoppable. Okay. Yeah. Or your relationship. If I'm a single guy, and I'm not, but if I was, if I really cared about rejection because it would create doubt and a lack in my mind, I'm not going to find what I want. Okay? But if I stop caring about who rejects me because I believe that there's an infinite amount of love in the world and an infinite amount of partners out there who would be a fit for me, I'm, I'm moving right along. No phase. I'm not phased. But again, our minds are wired to read meaning into rejection as saying that we're not enough. Now, there can always be some room for improvement. So I'm not dismissing anything that if I'm on the single scene that maybe there are some characteristics about myself I might want to change to improve my opportunities or to attract what I want. So that might impact the way I dress, the cologne I wear, how, how much I smile, the places I go to meet people, the type of conversations I have, the way I have conversations. What do I value? You know, and be talking about what I value. But I'm less attached to what happens if somebody rejects me. And that has a direct correlation to us when we're scripting about what are we attached to. Are we attached to what we're scripting? In a way that might even be creating a block. Because we're looking for something to show up in the exact way that we're scripting for it when it really wants to show up differently and in a better way. So remember that scripting is writing as if you already have what you want with the end result in mind, unattached to the specific outcome. You're in the flow. So when we are scripting, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, we're going to use scripting as kind of a, the, the linking in point to cover some other, discuss the questions that came up earlier, but remember when you're scripting, you're creating sacred space in a journal. Uh, you're writing a dedication in the journal, and you're dedicating it. The desires, wants, and needs expressed on these pages, pages shall come to pass with ease and grace and perfect divine time and order. God is my source. So it is. And then you start to script about relationships, work, money, health, personal development, personal growth. Okay? You can script about anything. When in doubt, you can script about gratitude. If you're feeling stuck, a good way to script about it is, thank you, God, that I'm stuck right now. I feel stuck. This must mean I'm in a pause. I intend to show up available, being open in this moment and full of trust. That I'm moving even if I can't see movement. That things are moving towards me even if I can't see movement. And that there are nothing but open doors ahead of me as I continue to move forward. That clarity is flowing to me. Clarity is a great item to script for when we're scripting about making decisions. Or when we're scripting in our creative space and we're trying to figure out new things. New branding, uh, new values, new relationships, 
when you're trying to get clarity on what you want, scripting for clarity is a very powerful concept to script about. But I start to become unattached to where the clarity comes from. Okay? All I know is, is I'm open for it. So, let's take, give me an example, Gabe, of what you're kind of dealing with and how we can apply that to scripting. You said you, you had a block. Yeah. So I, I put my journal there and <laughs> I walk up and I see it and I continue to walk. And I said, I, I have to get the, okay. the energy, not the energy, I just the feel. Then I open it up and then I, I just stare at the bike and then I close it and I walk away. Okay. But I leave it out there. And then when I travel, I take it with me. But it stays fun. And I put it out in the hotel room, it just stays there. It's like, I want to do it, but I just can't, I don't know why. Okay, so great, this is a great example. <laughs> really good example, okay? On a deep level, he wants to script, or he wants to script actively or often or whatever. He knows it's there, but yet there's some block to him opening up the book and sitting down for a few minutes and doing it. So this is where you dive in and you start to ask yourself some questions. And you're scripting for clarity on the answers. If there is something I'm afraid of about scripting, I am open and willing to receive insight on that. Okay, that's just an example. Be and I just throw some, because sometimes we can have fear about scripting because we are getting what we're writing for <laughs> and we're not sure what to write about and, and we're taking responsibility. Or there's, there might be some type of other internal pressure or doubt that we have about what we want to write about and whether it's viable and relevant and important and significant. Okay? I think you said something very important right now. That yes, I am receiving what I, I've written about. So maybe I'm not, I need more clarity on exactly what I want. Yes. Maybe that's blocking because I just I could say it in general terms, but maybe it's asking me, the universe, to be more clear, or I need to be more clear about Sure. It. That could, and, and, it, and probably I don't know how clear I should, I don't have clear, clarity. Right. Maybe that's it. Well, that, 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 that could be it. And look, when things are going well, things are moving along, and there's no like significant issue mm -hmm. that you're trying to solve, you know, work's going well, relationships are going well, Money's sufficient, you know, you, uh, we might think, well, I could script, but there's really not, I really don't have anything to script about, everything's going good, so now nah, I won't invest the time to uh, script. And, I mean, that's, that's very realistic, okay? So, I think you nailed it. The universe is saying, what more do you want? What, how deeper do you want to go in the success or the areas that you're in right now? Where do you want to grow? And it takes deliberate time and intention to do that kind of work because on the surface, man, everything's rocking and rolling. You know? And, uh, and that's good. And that creates a happy feeling and, and it can also lead us somewhat into a, I wouldn't call it complacency. It's not like there's anything wrong with you just being in the flow and enjoying what you got. And it's not like you're going, God, I, I got to create a problem to solve. Okay. <laughs> so it's not like you're looking, man, I don't feel like I have any problems. Why don't I create one? <laughs> and then I have something to script about. 
You don't want to do that either. But you're going next level. Next level is what might be a good phrase to where you go, hmm, things are going great. What next level do I have for myself? Is it education? Is it connections? Is it money? Is it health? If I look at my relationships, if I, what would the next level be like for a relationship that I have? And how could I improve? You know, how could I not improve, but how can I optimize, take it to the next level? And again, it's, it, it's the ocean of creativity to, to live in and swim in. Is there something I wish I was doing that I've never done before? You know, is there a path that I would love to pursue that I've never pursued before? Okay. This, require, this, this requires an active, creative energy. And um, that, that, that's a, there's a wealth of opportunity there to explore and figure out. Makes sense. Because there's, all, there's some part of your life that you could say, I want to up my game here. I want to up my experience. I want to deepen my experience. I want to enrich my experience. I want to add more value in my relationships, business, you know, whatever that I have. Is that helpful? Good, yes, absolutely. You know, very, very good. John, I have a question. The fact that he's judging the fact that he's that he's not. Mm opening the book or he's looking at it, could that be part of? It, it could you know, be, and that would be a good question to go, hmm, isn't I'm it? I'm blocking myself from. Right, because you're, isn't you're it judging yourself, and it's okay not to open it up every day. It's okay not to script if you are if you don't want to. Uh, yeah, no, thank you, Gina. There's a good opportunity there to say, am, am, I, am I hating or naysaying on myself because I should be scripting, but mm. I'm not? Mm. But do you really want to script from a should energy, you know, or have to energy, no. or a want to energy? No. Okay. No. And that's the important thing about when you're scripting and you're in the flow. It's like I want to script, not like I have to script because I don't have. And if only I script, I'll have it. Okay. <laughs> or if I'm scripting about it, it must mean I don't have it. No. But it's easy to get in that vibration yeah. because this is our habit. We typically come from this mindset, okay? But if I go, man, things are going great. Thank you, God, that everything's great. You know, I would love to script about something new for myself that takes me to the next level. I'm open to hear what that is. And by going in and say, I can script gratitude, and I can just start there. So every day I'm going to write five things that I'm grateful for in that present moment. And if that's all I script, that's enough to sustain my energy. See what I'm saying? And to open me up to more information, to more insight. And when you're asking for insight and you're asking for clarity, I love using the terms, I am open to... New insights, inspiration, dreams, visions, books, connections, emails, letters, articles, you know, uh, internet clicks, whatever, you know, um, random thoughts. I make that full list and I call all of those things out because what it does is that reminds me that there is an unlimited mm -hmm. number of sources from which insight can come. He bought a book, random book that I happened to have on my shelf. I didn't know that was going to happen tonight. He didn't know it was going to happen, but he, there might be a nugget in that book that takes his business or his life or his relationships to a priceless level. You know? People say five dollars. <laughs> uh, that is one. That's the book. <laughs> oh, it's called uh, Exactly What to Say. It's written by Philip M. Jones. <laughs> He also wrote a book called uh, Exactly How to Sell. So it's really quick, really quick read about some key phrases to use in your sales. You get some value from that because you're, you're in the real estate stuff. Um, 
So what else? Somebody else had some scripting. Go ahead, Jenna. Okay, so I had a job opportunity that I was excited about. Yes. Over 80 people applied. It was between me and one other candidate. Yes. So it was. It came really close to getting that job. Something inside of me, even when I was scripting, wasn't at complete peace about this job. <coughs> but I kind of wanted to be offered it anyway. Sure. Just so that my job hunt would be over. Okay. If that sure. makes any sense. So. I'm grateful that I didn't get it in the sense that down deep I know that there was this one thing that was kind of bothering me about okay. this job, but I'm having trouble moving on in my scripting because what I was scripting about didn't happen. Okay. Does that make sense? So I'm yes. trying to, as a person that's new to scripting, it, I've been highly specific about this job okay. in my scripting. So how do you kind of move past something that you've been scripting for but didn't happen, even though you know that really wasn't supposed to happen? Okay, that, well. Like, I'm still having trouble moving past it. Omar, you wanted to weigh in something? When you get the job that's truly for you, you'll be, you're going to be happy that that didn't work out. You're right. going to be thankful. Right, right. That, that's yeah. just what you're going to yeah. be like, damn, so, <laughs> that didn't work out. Yeah. Thank you, Omar. I mean, and that's exactly it. Right. So, right. if you can apply that perspective now. Right. Okay. <clears throat> See, that's what happens. We, we come from doubt. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, was this even the right thing for me to pursue? Maybe I shouldn't even pursued it. Uh, maybe I should have won. I mean, you can go into this mode about anything and kind right. of sit in judgment on yourself. Right. Or you can go, wow, see, isn't it interesting that? Isn't it interesting that I was scripting for something that I really didn't feel aligned with? There's a lesson. Mm -hmm. How do I, you know, how do I want a script going forward and how aligned do I want to feel with it? Right. If I don't, if I'm scripting about something and I'm not in alignment with it, what should I script about? Yeah, what should I? <laughs> you Good tell question. me. What would Clarity be a good... on the next, the next application, the next... Sure. Yeah. Your intuition is a gift, y'all. Use it. Mm. Pay attention to it. We don't give enough value to our intuition. We always doubt our intuition. Mm -hmm. And that goes to always good lessons, but it goes to missed opportunities, words that weren't said, things that were left undone, decisions that could have shown, uh, gone a different way. All right? Pay attention to your gut. Your gut told you. Right. Your gut was waiting for you to respond to it. You didn't. That's okay. Because mm -hmm. um, you kept scripting for it. Right. Okay. That's all learning. See, and scripting really is all about alignment. It's all about alignment, and it's all about intuition. Because you're creating from in here. This mm -hmm. is nothing but your intuition, and you're creating your own world. Okay. Right. You're creating your own experience in the universe only knows your, your own experience and what you're looking for. And so if you're scripting for, if we are ever scripting for something that is really not aligned for our higher good and we, pay, and we know that, okay, we're gonna attract that doubtful energy to it and that out of alignment energy. And even if had you gotten the job, you wouldn't have liked it and you already knew that. So that would have created an additional dilemma right. from which we learn from. We learn from all these dilemmas. And a dilemma is only when something is out of sync. Our thoughts, words, feelings, and actions, we always want, again, we want those things to be um, you know, consistent. Thoughts, feelings, words, actions. We see, we feel so much better when they are in a general alignment with each other, but when they're not, when we're thinking one thing and feeling another, when we're writing one thing and we're feeling another, that creates this dilemma that can create stress and anxiety and doubt, and we attract the result from that. And so this is where you go, thank you God for that scripting experience that I had when I experienced my intuition, you know? Um, you know, 
I am open and willing to trust. See, it was a good lesson about trust. Mm -hmm. To trust your intuition. Right. And um, that, again, it's all about open doors or closed doors. So the more trusting we are of our intuition, the more trusting we are of like, I got that gut feeling that there's, I would love to have this, but something just doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Trust that. Seek for clarity around that. Okay? I want alignment here, but I'm not feeling it. I'm open to understanding why. I'm open to more information. I want to show up available for full trust. Okay? And I'm open to being moved in that direction. And help me release attachment to exactly what shows up. Um, I wasn't gonna say anything, but it just it, it keeps circling around. I was sitting watching TV one day, and I heard this this lady talking. She said something. She said, uh, "The more that you, constantly, the more that you worry about something, you lower your vibration for allowing it to come to you." Say that again. The more that you constantly worry about something, you lower your vibration from a disallowing it to come to you. Absolutely. And when I and it stuck with me. The more you worry about something, the more you no, you lower your vibration. You lower your vibration to attract it. Um, and so I, when I, it, it stuck with me, and I started thinking like, man, I started looking at things that I let go, like I thought about it, let go. It actually came to me. Then I started thinking about another another area of my life where I want something, but I have so many doubtful and negative thoughts haven't got it yet. And I started to really pay attention to that. And so hearing that and then listening to it is like just clarity and confirmation, you know, of, of just releasing the outcome. Right. Let, letting it go. Yes. Um, and, and even with the things I script about, the things I, when I script it and I just let it go, show the like quickly then when you script you can you can feel yourself doubt because you're scared to write it mm -hmm. you're scared that your emotions mm -hmm. is like do I really want to say this you know mm -hmm. and so yeah. you, you feel yourself you, you you know what what you're doubtful about whenever you speak it when you things that show up you know mm -hmm. it's constant reminders like you could be out it don't even have nothing to do with you you can see you can be you can see things conversations like yeah, that's why I don't, because your mindset is already programmed for you to to almost hone in on your doubt. Sure. And you see it in different places. It it's just always always gonna show up in yeah. multiple multiple times, mm -hmm. in different scenarios. But see, it's the same thing. Right. So thank you for showing that because yeah. therein is the gift of scripting too. The real gift of scripting is about alignment. And look, we have our ego selves. We have our spiritual selves. Sometimes they're aligned. Most of the time they're not, okay? Um, but our spirit will start to express itself in scripting, but our ego will start to shift in and go, oh, no, I, I, I want that, but I really don't want it, okay? Or I don't want that, and I really want this. And that, that confliction of energy in alignment will throw our vibration off whack and create an inconsistency. So like Brandon said, it's about um, getting in that space of um, consistent, of paying attention to that. Oh, I'm scripting about having a really powerful conversation with somebody that would really help me, you know, solve some big things. Oh, See, so I can be scripting for that, but inside the ego can pop up and say, you can never have that conversation, or you don't really don't want to talk to that person, or no, you just need to stay angry or unavail unavailable to that, okay? Because I know if I go with what I'm writing about, which is my highest good, that requires me to show up differently for it. I have to be a different person. Mm -hmm. You gotta be vulnerable. I've gotta be vulnerable. I've gotta be trusting. I've gotta be open. I've gotta... Be healed. I've got to release anger. I've got to release resentment. I've got to release frustration. And I'm not ready to release those things. 
because they still have meaning for me. And so I keep that attachment to it. So this is a really good point about, again, the overall, what I see is the overall benefit of scripting is that alignment within us of our vibration to what we want. And the more we write, the more we practice writing about what we want, why we want it, what's important about it, the more embellishment we do to describing it, we get to uncover these things. We get to uncover these little um, opportunities to go, is this what I really want? What am I really afraid of here? What's really going to hold me back? Oh, how do I have to change in order to really get this result? And I'm, am I willing to assume responsibility for the change? Do I really want to own the result? You know something I find interesting, uh, Jonathan, uh, you can speak about positive things, right? And, and I'm pretty sure everybody experiences. You speak about positive things, right? you feel confident about something, but it's, not, it's like maybe people around you will warn you, give you a warning, but the warning is kind of like negative. Mm -hmm. Then, if, let's say you have a day where you talk negative, now they want to give you positivity. <laughs> right. You know, they want, so it's like, it's interesting how the mind, like how, how people are wired. Um, you know, it's like, go ahead. Tell them what was it? What I noticed, like, for example, if I'm thinking like good thoughts, I run across like good people, like, oh, like you meet this nice guy and like he gives you advice on like, hey man, do it this way. And then like, you have a thought like someone did something wrong to you, like that motherfucker, I should have, you know, you start thinking. <laughs> and then you meet someone, if someone is rude to you, you be like, hold on, where did that thought come from? And you start tracing back, oh, because I had that thought, this happened. So it's kind of like as, as within, so without. Yes. It's because like you kind of like you reflected everything that's was inside of you. So now as I go around the day, like somebody pissed me, I'll just let it go, you know? Yeah. And we're like, what am I thinking, you know? Because it seems like sometimes you're like on a, it, like basketball, you're in the zone. Everything just moves real slow. You don't hear anything. You're just out there just playing, you know? And the minute you're like, oh man, I'm on fire, you miss the next couple of shots. Yeah. So it's kind of like just being tuned into like not thinking about anything, just letting it happen. Yes. Thank you. Ex these are excellent points that relate not only to just our scripting experience, but how we're thinking on a daily basis and how we're vibrating on a daily basis. And look, y'all, you got to take 100% responsibility for your life. So when that person pops up in your experience, who's low energy, angry, rude, um, it's a great opportunity to go, whoa, how am I showing up today? Now, you don't want to, you don't, it doesn't mean you have to take responsibility for how they showed up, but you're just doing, it's okay to do that double check on yourself and saying, hmm, how am I showing up today? How's my energy? Well, yeah, and if, 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 if it's a match, if I'm feeling low energy and I attracted low energy, it's time to say, mm -hmm. I own that. Now, if it happens, and I my first thought is, is, Oh, I'm vibrating pretty high. Isn't it interesting that I still attracted this person or this experience into my own experience? Why did that happen? See, it's about practice. You don't have to judge it either way. Either way, it's an opportunity to learn. So if I go, oh, look what the universe gave me, an opportunity to practice patience, kindness, love, detachment, releasing, forgiveness, inner peace. Okay, so I don't have to judge that of, oh, I'm a bad, I must be a bad person because I attracted that experience. It doesn't mean that at all. It means there's some learning there for me. Or an ego check. Okay, an ego check, a vibration check, and also an opportunity to go, oh, isn't it interesting? Thank you, God, for the opportunity to practice patience with somebody who owns 100% their anger today. That's not on me. You know something I noticed too? The type of music I listen to depends on the, like, it uh, determines my vibration. Like, I can listen to rock and roll and I'm good because there's like a little mellow spike to just listen to just the music or classical music. Like, it just, 
even key all the way out, you know? Yes. Then I may listen to something goes like up and down, you be like, you find the motion goes like this, like this shit will cut it off. <laughs> or if you just, if I just cut my radio off and just, just ride and like, man, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. You know, you just start finding different things. It, you just feel like totally different, like you're in a different world. Absolutely. That is another good example to, for us to pay attention to our environment, okay? Well, not only are we responsible for ourselves, but we have responsibility for our environment. And music is a powerful, transformative medium that we can have that either takes our energy higher or takes us lower. And it's something to pay attention to, is the impact of that. So when you have a choice, if you're stuck in the car, instead of complaining about your hour commute downtown, <laughs> Why not listen to the, why not see, thank you God, I have an hour to listen to an audible book. I have an hour to listen to Wayne Dyer. I have an hour to listen to class my favorite music that makes me feel good. And I arrive at where I arrive wherever I'm supposed to be in divine time and order and I don't care about the traffic. And you have a completely different experience. And you arrive in a completely different mood. And you arrive open and available for a completely different outcome. But aren't Thank you, you? But aren't you? How, I'm trying to find. Almost compromising yourself. I, I, I'm a confident person, and when I'm, uh, but I also have a. I know I have an ego, and I'm trying to change that. Because if you come at me, I'll come back at you. Right. But I'm trying to change not to come back at you. And, um, but then at the same time, I feel I'm compromising myself. When because I'm not saying what I want to say, uh, uh, how they came at me. And, um, I see. You know, because um, I, I feel I'm vulnerable in a lot of in the way I'm, I'm doing things. And then if it doesn't come out the way that you perceive it or the way you think it should come out, because you put yourself in that state from fighting that ego. Sure. Because the ego's like, man, you put it out there like that. And it, didn't come in, it didn't take it order. It didn't come the way you thought it, they would, should take it. And now you want to protect yourself. Yeah, I used to do that a lot. I used to really come back at people really hard. And I mean, sometimes it's not in such a pleasant manner. Right. And I think it's because my, like you said, your own ego, but it's also your attachment. And you took it so personal that actually when you, when you take the judgment of that judgment, you actually did the judgment. I did the judgment. Right, because even though they came at you, right, you had that opportunity that's why it says self-inflection comes from both in both those directions, doubt and self-confidence. And when I used to come back at people, it was because of my doubt of myself, I would come back at you. <clears throat> if I had the confidence in myself, you know what? Be like my sister used to do. Shake your head. <laughs> Stoically. Don't right? argue with a fool. Because reason being, <clears throat> I see a lot of people judge, and I'm sitting around, and I used to do it all the time, judge people all the time. And actually what I'm doing is I'm taking that judgment and attaching it to myself. And so I'm actually judging myself through them. That's why I react because I was more mad at myself than I was at them for being that way. Really good. And and that's that's good input because it comes down to what we value and why we value it. See, the ego values uh, counter response. Because the ego feels wounded and it, damn it, it feels it's got to defend itself. Okay? Okay? Because if I don't defend myself, it must mean fill in the blank. I'm not good enough. I'm not loved. I'm not accepted. Whatever. Okay? And we make that judgment about ourselves. That causes us to seek out the response. Now, it doesn't mean that there aren't times when we need to stand our ground and speak our truth. Absolutely. But it's a big shift to go from the pattern of that 
to completely allowing somebody else to have their opinion and it means nothing and it doesn't even elicit a response from us anymore. Okay? And we can create that when we start to value the inner peace of not having to respond at all more than the egos, the value the ego gets from making that response. And the key is, is that when I'm responding from a place of empowerment, okay, when I do respond, my response is completely different than it would be if my ego was responding and defending myself. Oh, yes, I know that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, this comes down to, again, our choice, our opportunity to choose how we want to show up in confrontation. I choose to show up in power, and I can script this. I choose, I intend to show up in power in any confrontational experiences that come my way. And I show up this way, it sounds like this, I show up this way, I am calm and peaceful within myself, and I allow other people to have whatever response. I trust my intuition to know when it's the right time for me to speak my truth. Oh, and when I do speak my truth, I speak from a place of confidence, peace, deep respect for myself, deep respect for the other person, but very firm in whatever boundary I'm choosing to put down at the time. See what I'm saying? So you create that different response, but it takes practice. This does not come overnight, and the ego's grip on our response and the need to defend ourselves is so ingrained from the day we're born, it's a hard habit to break, but that's where, when we practice that releasing or detaching, I detach from that energy. I'm empowered. I can choose to respond or not, and when I do choose to respond, this is how I respond. Well, John, this is what I'm trying to change. I'm trying to change that part. Which part? Because, because my, when I see my ego respond, my ego responds where, where I cut. And then I don't want to cut. I want to figure out how to um, not cut it, but keep it in peace. So this is what I'm fighting. Because the ego will say, my the way I am always been, it will be to just leave it alone and just go about my business. And even though I would miss it, and it's funny because I always tell my daughter, I just tell her, you know, never quit something you love because the only person that misses it is you. And, you know, so I'm trying to live by that teaching. So if you could have the, if you could craft the perfect response in a situation like that, what would it sound like to you? I guess I'm trying to find out <clears throat> what happened today, so I, 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 I chose not to respond at all. Okay. And how did that make you feel? It makes me feel that I'm not. myself short or you, I'm matching I'm matching their energy mm -hmm. where I could have said um, I mean I see I like your class a lot I just got back from Colorado just two hours ago <laughs> so <laughs> instead, of, instead of me saying I'm back I don't say nothing and, and in saying nothing, you feel fill in the blank. I feel that I should say that. Okay, but do you feel, I get that, but do you, when I say what do you feel, do you feel rejected, disrespected, unwelcomed? All three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but they should be, you know, they should be texting me and are you back? So I'm trying not to take it. Okay, because in your ideal world, they would ask you if you're back yet. Correct. Or that they would inquire where you are. Right. Okay, so, in this situation, David has assigned a meaning to the absence of a communication from somebody that he cares about. Okay, everybody with me? Okay. He's assigned a meaning. Okay. If I don't hear from them within a certain time frame, right. my belief is right. 
they don't care, they're not thinking about me, that might equal they don't love me or value me. Okay, so let's just go with that. Let's assume that that's what they believe. Let's worst case it. Let's assume they believe all those things. Do you legitimately believe that they think those things? There's information right there. Okay? Why? Because we are two different types of people. This would be my response to say that. Okay. That's what I would do. Do you have any other evidence other than this example of communication that tells you that you are loved, respected, and wanted? Yes. Okay. So this is why I don't want to take a little thing. Okay. Pick your battles. Push them off my shoulder. Okay. Exactly. So this is where you go. Wait. This is where we check ourselves. Remember, we talked about what is my belief. What do I believe? Isn't it interesting that when I don't hear from this person within this time frame after I've been traveling, if I don't hear from them, my belief is this, and you write it down. Get, write, get a workbook. Write this stuff down. Huge value, because this is where change takes place. Then you check it, wait a minute, is this really true? Do I have any other evidence that this is either true or really false, and this is just some aspect of me that has some hypersensitivity to a need for validation that they're thinking about me, okay? And they have to think about me when I want them to, otherwise, I'm not important. But if they're thinking about me when I uh, don't want them to or don't need them to, it's okay. I don't have any specific reaction. Okay? So w this is how our minds work. We create this whole loop. You have this loop in your head. But this is where you pull for you, say, take a step back and say, wait a minute, what evidence? Is this even really true? Of course I know my daughter loves me. I have so much evidence to prove that my daughter loves me. Now, we're still different. Okay? Am I always thinking about my daughter 100% of the time? No. Does that mean that I don't love and respect and value my daughter? Hmm, no. Okay, why am I putting an expectation that is, is it realistic or unrealistic? How do you know what my daughter? I just use that as an example. I know you have a daughter. It might be somebody else. Okay. It could be anybody. Okay. But that I have this expectation. Is this expectation I have really legitimately realistic? Is it something I've created that's really not based on any other evidence or indicators? And isn't it interesting that I've created this expectation in my head that if I really look at if it's realistic or not, I would go, heck no, it's not realistic for me to expect anybody to be thinking about me at any given time. But isn't it interesting that my ego demands that they ought to be thinking of me at a certain time? That's right. But is it okay for him to express that that's a need of his, though? Um, you know what I mean? Like at okay, so let's time, get to that. Let's yes. say he's in a relationship, and like I'm in a relationship where sometimes I feel like this person was obviously not at that moment thinking yes. of me, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't mean he doesn't love me. Right. But wasn't, I, I, mean, I can relate to this, okay? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I can relate. Yeah. So I create this expectation of what I would like to, for him to have done yes. that he didn't. So where does the line get drawn between this is just me and my ego and setting expectations that are unrealistic to people that really do care about me? Okay. And the line of expressing, I have a need that you're not filling. Okay, so first you do this exercise that we just did, all right? Take a step back, look at it, and say, what do I believe? Is this belief even really true? How much evidence do I have yeah. that supports it? Yeah. Where is my ego? What attachment does my ego have mm -hmm. to getting a communication from a certain person, okay? And what is my expectation that they, they should be thinking about me, okay? So, once you do that, okay, then you can go, well, let me release an expectation. Because how can I manage an expectation anyway over something I have no control of? 
nor do I ever know how, what somebody's thoughts are 100% of the time, what they're thinking of, and is it okay if they're not thinking about me? I mean, why do I have to be so important, you know, da, 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 okay? And is there some things there that I can release? Release the expectation, release the energy, okay? But then to get to your point, then the next question is, is it, I get to create the type of communication I have with this person. And I really do love it when they do text me and ask me if I'm home or how I'm doing and uh, that kind of thing. That makes me feel that um, I, I am wanted, even though I know that I am, because mm -hmm. I want myself, okay? Mm -hmm. But it, it enriches my experience and connection to somebody else to have that communication. Hmm, okay. Would it be okay for me to request that somebody engage, increase their engagement with me via text message or phone calls or expressions? Absolutely, it's okay to ask for that. But am I asking it from a want to or from a have to? I have to have this. You have to text me X number of times a day or you have to text me under these conditions and if you don't, I'm going to think blank. Okay? Because it means blank. You don't care. Okay? But if I set things up like that, that are so rigid, I'm always gonna be disappointed because nobody can live up to our, my expectations for communication. Okay, because how can I, because they're supposed to read my mind and know when I'm feeling lonely and know when I need to feel loved and know when I'm available to receive their message because if I'm not, I don't care if they text me at all. It's only when I'm not, don't have anything to do <laughs> and I'm thinking about how come this person hasn't contacted me right, yet right. and I must not be loved because they're not thinking about me but they were just they're just as busy now as I was then when I wasn't texting them see what I mean you can go down this rat hole of endless permutations but since my daughter's like that because when I don't text her back in a certain amount of time she will go crazy okay so because I would do it normally good good example so this is an opportunity for you to say, daughter, let's talk about this. Because what's most important is that you feel loved all the time. Okay? And where does that come from? Okay? And how can we create a system where it's open and free? Where you're free to receive my communications. I'm free to send them. You're free to send me yours. I'm free to send you mine. And in the absence of that, we still feel loved. Because aren't we loved? Are we really waiting for the confirmation of an email, of an emoticon, or an emoji, as evidence that we're loved? What kind of relationship do we have? How deep is it? And you have, get to explore that. Okay? Because if, you're, if, if your view of our relationship is, is that if you don't get a text message, you're not feeling love, it's not about the text message. There's a deeper need, there's a deeper conversation that needs to be had about the value of the relationship and what the relationship is based on. Because it's based on kind of a habit. Like, I'm, I'm a person that when I get to work out, I say, I'm here. You know, I'm just that type of person because I'm always feeling that way. But if I don't do it one morning because it's busy, then I get a message saying, what happened to me? See, so we can create these situations mm -hmm. to where there's a codependency. Mm -hmm. Because it means something if you don't. Take away the meaning if she doesn't hear from you. Take away the meaning and create a have to instead of, or a want to, and a consistent energy rather than a have to, rule-based, if I don't hear from you, I must assume you're either dead, <laughs> okay, or you hate me, <laughs> when neither one is the case. So again, how secure, this is all around security. This is all around security. 
And we, and we bring our own security. See, if I'm secure, I don't need you to respond like that. I don't need you to hit me there, hit me there, hit me there. Because I'm secure in myself, and I'm secure in the relationship. It's wonderful when we do, but there's no have to. Um, you said that when you don't do it, your daughter will say, yeah, do it. I mean, how I see it is that he created a, maybe a good habit and she noticed a difference and she spoke about it. Now, I don't see nothing wrong with her saying it. It's just how, how does she react? Right. Like, does she, does she yell at you on the flag? Or is it just more like, hey, Dad, I didn't hear from you. Uh, you know, I was just concerned. That's... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, so long as you receive it that way. But if you receive it and go, man, she's so neat. See, no, she's mom, needy. I got okay. she's I laugh when I read because I still okay. think I don't know what she's okay. <laughs> But this is the all of these little these little things can take up a lot of emotional energy. Okay, but there's huge opportunities to speak our truth, to have a conversation. Wait a minute, let's talk about text messages and Facebook and phone calls and all of that. Are we secure here? Is there any doubt in your mind that you're loved? Is there any doubt in your mind that if something really serious was happening, that I would do everything in my power to communicate that to you and let you know? So let's put those up there on the table right now. Are we feeling good? Are we feeling secure? Oh, and let me set your expectations. If you text me, I may not respond right away. I might not respond at all. I mean, depending on the relationship. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything anyway. Okay? If something is really wrong or different or significant that's going on here, what you can count on is a conversation about it. You know? And an opportunity for us to talk. I'm struggling. Yeah, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm a... I'm a I'm, I'm, Did this conversation help? Maybe my help perception is me. It helped because maybe the perception is me. Because if I don't, it is your perception. If I don't do it, people, a lot of people think I'm selfish. So I'm trying not to be. See now, there's another. Like that. We don't have time to go go down that, but that's a good question. Take a piece of paper and write that at the top. A lot of people think I'm selfish. Hmm. Where does that come from? That's what I'm trying to find out. Okay, so do the work. Okay, how do I want to show up? Can I even manage other people's opinions of me that think I'm selfish? If I could possibly change their perception, what would I have to do to demonstrate that? And would it even stick? Would it even matter? Would it be enough? Okay, these are, these are all great things that can unfold in your scripting. And you talk about what the script about it doesn't have to be huge to script about. It can be these smallest things. How do I have a different conversation with this person about the way we communicate? I'm open to new ideas. I'm open to new beliefs. I'm open to new words. Okay? We have dominion over all things. We get to choose what we want. That's a God-given gift is our freedom to choose and our free will. The contrast we experience in all of our experiences are also the gift because from the contrast we learn, from the contrast we can compare, from the contrast we can create a preference. I like this. I don't like this. I love this. I hate this. This is a fit for me. This is not a fit for me. I'm available for this. I'm unavailable for that. So you can wrap your arms and embrace all that contrast and say, thank you, God, for this opportunity to learn more about myself, learn more about other people, and deliberately create my life. You can do it. You are all powerful creators. I trust your intuition. Give it your own trust and go out and create your world. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight.